Now, whilst in itself the 3D presentation is very effective, I needed a little bit more. I needed to integrate it into Keynote. Now, there are two ways you can integrate into Keynote. You can export to Keynote, and that will allow you to create, as I said before, a presentation with a slide for every event. But I really wanted to keep the animation and uh, sort of move from event to event uh, using the animation facilities, and then also supplement the uh, timeline presentation with some additional slides, additional bullet points, etc. So what I did, if I just cancel this now, was to go to File Export 3D, and then Export as a QuickTime Movie. Now, you can export full HD 720p quality. Uh, what I'd suggest is you up the event duration to something like 10 seconds, and then just hit Next, decide where you want to save it, and then save the 3D timeline. And what will happen now is it will actually render out a full QuickTime movie, and for each event there'll be a separate chapter mark. So let me just show you the final movie that I rendered out from Timeline 3D. So this is the actual QuickTime movie that I'll be using in the presentation. So let's just uh, do an enter full screen. And as you can see, I've added the background back in, but completely hands off now. It's a, it's a full movie. It will just take us through each transition, go to each event within the specified time. Now I've set this, I think, for two seconds delay rather than 10 seconds, but in hindsight, uh, 10 seconds is probably better if you're going to integrate this into a quick time presentation. But as you can see, it just goes through each event. But what I really want to do is stop it at each event and then add some additional slides in as well. Now, the way I've done that is to incorporate the quick time movie into Keynote. So let me show you how to do that. Now, this is the Keynote file that I've created to deliver the presentation. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but uh, we're nearly there. Uh, as you can see, there's some standard Keynote slides for the first part of the presentation. And then when we get to slide seven and onwards, I actually start to incorporate the timeline, the 3D timeline from BDOC's timeline. Uh, let me just show you what it looks like. Um, I mean, this is slide 10. And as you can see, as well as the timeline, I've added in some additional panels in Keynote and also some uh, bullet points to uh, sort of help me through the presentation. And just to show you what it looks like before I show you how I put it all together, let's just play from this slide. So the movie will just automatically kick off when the slide starts and takes us to the next point within the timeline. And then I hit spacebar, the panel pops up, we have a sparkle effect, and then the bullet points. For this particular one, I can just uh, hit spacebar to go through. And then when I've got to the end of that particular bullet point, the uh, panel disappears, and then the movie will carry on and move to the next point on the timeline. And then again, I can just pull up the panel with some additional points and to talk through it. So hopefully it's going to be a very effective method of getting across uh, this sort of chronology of screencasts online. But anyway, let's have a look at how I put it together and some quick tips on how you can do the same for your presentations. Now, if you're not familiar with Keynote, I really suggest you go and check out episodes uh, 118 and episodes 52 and I'll give you some background as to how to do some of the uh, builds and things that I'm going to show you now. Uh, Keynote itself is a fantastic application, and uh, it's uh, extremely powerful as well, especially in its latest release. So what I've done to start off the presentation, or rather the segment that I'm going to incorporate the timeline into, is just to create uh, a slide with some effects on. Now, you can see those effects by, well, basically we have a rectangle. Now, this is just a rectangle that I generated in OmniGraffle and dragged into the uh, slide. If we go to the inspector and if we have a look at the build in options. So the first build is that the rectangle will flip in and uh, then we have some text. This became a podcast fan at the moment that will come in with a shimmer and then that will be followed by uh, some lines of text which will come in automatically after the title and the other paragraphs will automatically follow as well. And then to go out, uh, let's see, there's a build out. So the text, the title dissolves the uh, lines of text dissolve, and then the rectangle itself flips out. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Keynote, that might sound a little bit complicated, but once you've had a play with it, this is a, it's all fairly standard stuff, and it's quite easy to put together. So that's sort of like my, my building block. That's my main slide that I want to uh, use with the timeline. So let me just pop the inspector down. Uh, now, to get the timeline movie, and don't forget this is a high-definition movie. I've copied it to my desktop. I'm just going to drop it onto this slide. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that these high-definition 
movies can be quite large. I think this one is about 300 megabytes. But you normally only need one copy of the movie in your presentation. You don't have to have multiple copies. Now you can see here I've dragged the uh, movie in. I'm going to reposition it. I found the optimum place for this particular one is, uh, let's see, it's 955 pixels by 360. And as you can see, it's overlapping on the rectangle. So what I need to do is just push that to the back. And there we go. Right now, if I was to play this, the whole movie itself would just start playing straight away and go right the way through. So we need to find a way of stopping and starting at the points that we want to do. Now, built into Keynote within the inspector, if we go to the quick time options, you have a start and stop control. Uh, so you can control where the movie starts and where it stops. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it start. Now for this first slide, I want the first three points to appear. And then I want it to stop when it says became a podcast fan and then for the block to flip in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the out point. So where the movie stops playing, just skim right the way through. So it's there, became a podcast fan. So I actually want it to stop there. Okay. And basically that's it. So now if we play that, let's see what happens. Okay, so we have the 2D representation at the start of the movie, and then we have the movie itself, and the first point, the second point, and then it comes to the third point, which is the point where I want it to stop. Okay, so the movie actually stops there, and then I click my control, and there we go, the, uh, the keynote rectangle appears. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, so that's our first slide, and if I hit the uh, spacebar again, that will go out, and then the movie finishes because we've set a start and a stop point. What we want to do now is to duplicate this slide, so I'm going to say duplicate. And we've now got a second copy of the slide. Now, the nice thing is it doesn't make a second copy of the movie. It will just reference the same copy of the movie. But what I want to do on this one is to change the start and stop position for the movie. So if I click on the movie first, so I now want it to stop on the next point, which is, I just drag along carefully. Here we go, decided to create a Mac audio podcast, but I want it to start and where we stopped last time, which was, there we go, become, became a podcast fan. Okay, that's fine. And then all I need to do now is just change this title here. So just to remind myself where it stopped. Decided to create a Mac podcast. Okay, just some extra points. Now, if we go back to the beginning and play. Again, our first slide, the movie starts. We get the first three points. I hit space bar. We get the rectangle, the title. The points we want to talk about. Spacebar again, and the rectangle disappears. And then it moves to the next point and stops. Spacebar again. And there we go. And to move on to the next point, we just uh, highlight this slide, duplicate it, create a new slide, and then just move the start point and the end point of the movie using the inspector and just go through your presentation building that up. Now it's a little bit fiddly, but the results I think are really well worth the effort. But uh, that's how you can incorporate high definition movie of your timeline into Keynote.